Hello, everyone. Happy Friday. Not Thursday. Today is Friday. Uh, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to the stream. Friday. All right. Looks like audio is working. Uh, oh, Richard. Hey, thank you. Cheers. Um, yeah. What's going on, everybody? We are going to be doing music is the plan. Uh, tonight, I am joined by the Groove Synthesis Third Wave, this big old blue thing right here. And we're going to be playing with Keep Forest's uh, new library called Berserker. Uh, I am not familiar with Keep Forest, like, at all. Uh, I've, I've heard the name maybe once or twice, but yeah, and man, this library has, like, blown my mind. <laughs> like, this is by far one of the most complex contact instruments I've used. Uh, so I'm looking forward to kind of playing with that and showing you why it's neat. Um, but in order to do that, we're going to need to kill robots from Sweden. Because the game I wanted to, like, rescore tonight is called Generation Zero. Um, this is a game I've been wanting to do some music for for a minute. Uh, just because, like, I love this game and I thought it would be fun. And this all lined up so perfectly because the Groove Synthesis Third Wave here is, like, kind of a PPG sort of deal. It's not, but it, it is, you know, more or less. And, uh, you know, that's very 80s. Generation Zero is set in 1989, I believe, in somewhere Sweden. I can't pronounce it. Because uh, I went to public school. And then Keep Forest sent over this library called Berserker, which is all like tribal drums, I guess. Like well, big Viking war drums and shit. And I was like, okay, so we have PPG, like 80s stuff, killer robots in the 1980s, and Viking war drums. So this is like all the ingredients we need to make some really weird shit. And I thought that would be a very fun sort of creative challenge, you know, just because uh, that's such a bizarre mixture of things. And this, I thought, would make a good, I don't know, contextual stream of, like, when you get hired to do this sort of stuff, these are the briefs you might face of, like, it's 80s killer robots in Viking war place. Make music for that. <laughs> so I thought this would be fun. Um what uh, controller are you running there? Uh, this, the main MIDI controller is a Casio Privia PXS7000. And then over here is the Sparrow 5x5 controller, uh, five faders, five knobs. So that's like my MIDI uh, modulator tool. And the Casio is just a big 88 key weighted keyboard thing. Um, so yeah, that's the stream. That's what we're doing. And... This is the game here on Steam, Generation Zero. Uh, I would play you the trailer to show you the music that's in it, but I don't know on the copyright on that. So you could look this up. It's on Steam for 25 bucks, uh, and there's like a bundle version with different equipment and like weapons and such. Super, super fun game. I mean, games are... Games that have really distinctive atmospheres always stand out to me, and this one is just so cool. The graphics are great. It really does look like this. Like, this is what you see in the game. It looks amazing. Uh, kind of action-y, mostly kind of stealthy. There is some bass blowing up stuff, and, you know, a lot of stealth, a lot of combat. It's a great game. It's really, really fun. If you're into just, like, walking around, blowing things up, I, I don't know that there's much better game. Whoops. Oh, shit. Okay, hopefully that wasn't enough to get copyrighted. In other news on Steam Games, uh, You Will Die Here Tonight just released, and my friend Christopher Floyd did the score for this game. This is a really fun game that's like 20 bucks. Very old school, like Resident Evil uh, sort of thing. Very fun, very different game. Uh, and a lot of my decent sampler instruments were used to make the score for that. So that was kind of fun. Um, just a little bit of fun factoids. Yeah, Generation Zero is what we're going to be rescoring here tonight. In other news, Noctua by Venus Theory comes out next week 
with UVI. For the low, low price of zero dollars. So this is what I've been working on for the last, like, year. And it comes out next week. It's got cool sequences and stuff. Uh... like stabs for like you know trailer <laughs> stuff uh some good trailer alarm type things that kind of stuff uh some big old bases so i kind of wanted to make my own scoring instrument library and uvi helped me build this so this comes out december 14th I want to say the Thursday the 14th so that will be coming very very soon totally free very very fun three layers you get a three layer microtonal somewhat generative sequencer with some ratcheting and chance like probability stuff some effect stuff some custom effects chains I built so that's coming soon uh in other news in decent sampler news we have Alt strings from myself and David Hillowitz. A new string library we made by running our cellos and violas and such. bunch of guitar pedals and whatnot. Uh, Arctic's probably one of my favorite presets. I love the sound of this one. So that is out now. And I've got new videos coming. And as part of one of my upcoming videos, I built a new instrument, the kalimba. And I built this instrument on a budget of $10, and that's part of the video. I need to get this uploaded to Gumroad and stuff, but... I'm going to make this free as well. And then, yeah, Synthbox I released a little while ago. That's free. You can get that. bunch of cool synth sounds I got at KnobCon and yeah um oh and then uh Ephorus is free as well cinematic synthy bits so good good stuff and I think that's all the news I had oh and we were going to be doing this stream in Cubase, but Cubase does not like my new audio interface, so I can't use Cubase to stream, which is sad, because the new Cubase 13 update is actually really, really good, and the new uh, Iconica Sketch, I think, I Ionica or Iconica? Yeah, Iconica Sketch library that's in Cubase 13 is fucking amazing. Um, so I really wanted to stream with that tonight, but I stayed up until like 2 in the morning trying to get it to work, and it wouldn't. Anyways, uh, so this is one of the loops I made. So that was one of the loops I made yesterday as kind of a test. Uh, this is all made up of the Q 
keep forest library, uh, one of my custom kick drums I made, some custom reverse things which are made from the keep forest library. So just the keep forest library. This is just the drums from this thing. It's called Berserker, except it runs in fucking contact. And this library is fucking ridiculous. Um, I mean, you, you can watch their video. Their video on it's like almost an hour long to explain all the features this has. It's literally like that obnoxious. So it's all these drums and stuff. Uh, I mean, there's like a dozen round robin samples for each hit. You can layer things and get like big ensembles. You can control the amount of looseness of the ensemble and such. Uh, rhythm engine with per step velocity panning filter pitch and then layering. Uh, you can have different key sequences and all sorts of shit. And then effects chains here where you can add this. And all of these have presets too. So like the war drums category has, uh, yeah, 12 presets of effects chains or well I guess maybe it's counted by something else I don't know anyways so there's yeah in total there are 5, 49 effects chains that are already put together for you this library is insane and this is just the drums for this loop I made So that is a massive, massive sounding library. I like that it reminds me of Damage, but it the engine is a little more, I don't know, interesting than Damage. I guess Damage 2 is a lot better. Uh, from the third wave, I just added these. And I think these were all custom patches. So that's all I did with the synth, but you put that together and you have this really great... We mute the game. And in terms of like the vibe of the game... Pretty killer, and the game has extremely good sound design which I always appreciate. So that was one of the things I made, and that's kind of what I wanted to make tonight. Uh, if we open my other projects... Don't care. I made another loop, and... I figure we'll make like one or two of these tonight, just for shits and gigs. Uh, this is the second loop I made. This was just such a fun one. So that's kind of what I wanted to make, and I thought that was such a fun combo of things, especially with the third wave here. Very 80s, like... Such a vibe. And of course, being complimented with the big, big fucking drums is great. The only extra thing I used in this, um, I don't think I used any custom samples. No, uh, the only other library I used in this is Tom Factory from uh, Fracture Sounds for this part. Just a really good library for action drums. Uh, so yeah, that's what we're gonna do tonight. So let's get into it 
Yeah, it's a fucking great game. Highly recommend it. All in on the cinematic stuff. I mean, that's pretty much all I do anymore is, like, score things. So, yeah, pretty much. Um, okay, so... I was gonna say we could write, like, a title theme, but I really like the title theme in this game already. Uh, the soundtrack is from... I forget... Something Venom, I believe. Yeah, I don't know if this was them or not. Oh, from Avalanche Studios. Okay, I don't know. Um, whoever wrote the music, great fucking job. So, yeah, the game is a lot of atmosphere, especially at night. Very dense forests. Really cool little sound effects. And the combat, um, like here's where I get into some combat. Very big gun sounds. Except I blew through those enemies a little too quick. Uh, if we go to like this part. Yeah, I fight this big thing. So we have like big open fields, you know, lots of space, and I think in contrast it's nice to have very punchy combat music. The game did a good job of it. But you could hear, you know, very percussive, very loud gunshots, and then a lot of just atmospheric effects. Yeah, as we're crawling around here, there's another big machine over in the distance. And I mean, the, the tension in this game is incredible. So that's kind of something we want to work to convey. So let's make some musicing, shall we? Uh, so let's start off with. And this is going to be my master MIDI. So the third wave is on three and four. I want the MIDI from the Casio. I want to route the output. Oh, my audio interface, sorry, someone asked about that, uh, is the new AudioFuse 16 rig from Archuria. All right. Mm. Ooh. I like that. So let's write a, like, after combat, like, we're just, we're just going around. Doing stuff. Let's get a limiter on the session. compression to make everything a bit more gluey. So we're thinking 80s. So I like that D flat. Something like that, and we could do bing, 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 something like that. Uh, damage two, no. I've been thinking that might be what Santa buys me for Christmas, but Santa also wants to bring me a new camera lens and possibly a new camera, so I don't know that I can afford all of those things at once. <laughs> um, we will see. Okay, so something like that, just to start. Yeah, let's just lay it down, and is that, um, feel like 
an ambient theme needs to be a bit slower. Like 90? Like 85? Yeah, 85 feels okay. And I guess we're just going like straight 4-4. Four, four. All right, let's do something. Let's just try and write like a minute or two. Yeah, let's go for like a minute and a half or two. Just want to lay down kind of a... So that is patch B four P zero zero six. Cool. And that's gonna need just like a wall of fucking reverb on it. So how about some black hole with the black hole preset? Yay! <laughs> I'm I'm a musical genius. So now we need like a mm -hmm. kind of like a brassy thing with like some delay on it, possibly just to get like an ARP going. It should be. Ah, it's just very, very quiet. Because I have the channel down. Okay, so something like that. Oh no. 
Ah, uh, I've been having some issues with the third wave here where it doesn't like the MIDI. From Reaper for some reason. God damn it. Okay, I think I have to reboot it again. Don't know if that's a third wave problem or what. I think it's a Reaper issue for some reason. Like, the, the clock and Reaper in this thing don't like each other. Hmm. Now we wait. I think that and then an ARP, another pad layer, a bass, and like maybe some super, super quiet percussion could work. Okay. There we go. One, two, three, four. Yeah. So, where does the ARP come in? Creeping around. And like game music is gonna be dynamic, obviously. This isn't gonna be fixed, but. Like a, a creepity quiety. Something like that. Uh, third wave, do audio over USB or is it all analog outs? I think it's all the analog outs. I don't think it does audio over USB, but it's four part multi timbral, so it actually has four outputs on the back, so you can have individual outputs for each part, which is really, really cool. Tonight's beverage is a bubbly. Coconut pineapple. My wife found it at the store and thought I would like it. Um, every time I drink one, I can't help but think of uh, Robert California from The Office, where it's the Japanese drink where it's like coconut and penis, and then he drinks it and he's like, why, why did they add coconut? What was wrong with the original? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> so that's great. It's pretty okay. It's better cold. Um... Okay, so creepy, quiet art. Yeah, just like something like that. God damn it. And for some reason, Reaper is like an eighth note off for me now. I don't know what I did. I just want to tweak that sound a little bit. So one, two, three, four. And then this will be our loop. Whoops, shit. Just recolor that one for me. What? No, recolor the, I don't know, whatever. Uh, so this will be our cut point, just so I know. So I think we'll let that run, and I'm just gonna... like that where just it you know just move that filter a tiny bit so there's just a bit more something going on 
Just the audio. Cool, so that is third wave patch number... <sighs> B4P008, B4P008. So one of the things that kind of bothers me with it is there's no like category sorting for presets and it has a lot of presets. All right, so we just need to make sure that's in time. A little bit of tension. I feel like it's definitely too loud. We could probably add like an auto panner. All right, let's add something else. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's probably way too much. Damn it. There we go. So we're creeping. That's annoying. Okay, never mind. Maybe something like that could work. What's the goal with the scream? Scoring for fun? Yeah, mostly just fun. Trying out some libraries. Because I said I would play with this stuff on a stream, so here I am. Streaming. Plus, I only get to borrow this thing for like another couple weeks, so might as well get it out of the way now before the holidays. Okay, so something, something, something. Maybe just like a little bass with this. That's kind of cool. It's too much for an ambience, but like... That kind of goes. Yeah, let's just do it. No one cares. Stop thinking. Start doing.
class. No, it didn't trigger it. Damn it. Okay, hold on. That's kind of sucked anyway. What's the bass on here? Man. Bit of stank. Because that, that could work as like a melody. Or, you know. Damn it. So that would be kind of like our establishing line. Okay. Enough faffing about. Okay, so that is third wave patch B4013. 013, great. <clears throat> so yeah, like another pad, I agree some plucks might be kind of cool. Just gotta make sure that is in time. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Yeah, like a bell. Maybe not that delay, but maybe the delay eternity. And then if we gave that a little bit of black hole and then fed that into like just a little bit, a little bit of juice. Um, dominant resonance. Maybe a granular effect on that, like pinging into the reverb a little bit. Uh, fifths might be a bit much. Could be cool. Octaves? I don't know. Three, four. Mm. 
needs more. That's kind of cool. Uh, other tape delays. The Cherry Audio one's really good. Um, but yeah, the Archery one, I just really, really like it. I don't have a particular reason. just works well and like I've had it installed for a long time. The Cherry Audio one's cheaper and sounds pretty much the same to my ear. And it, I don't know that the... The Archery one doesn't have the motor stop control. Right? No, uh, but the Cherry Audio one does, so you can have those, like, dropouts. Um, I don't know, is that too much going on? Do you have, like, a melody? I think that's nice. Another pad, probably just to fill that out. This is zero four zero, and then we'll add some drums. All right, so another pad. Oh, this has like a bunch of shit happening on it. That's why. Hmm. That's nice. Yeah, and just slap a reverb on that, and that fills out. I think that's nice. I dig that, and let's add an auto pan for some movement, nice and slow, and like a tremolo or something. I don't know. All right, let's just fill that out and add some drums.
Pete's heading out. Thanks for tuning in, Pete. Happy holidays to you as well. Maybe we'll do another stream here eventually. Well, we have some charity stream week coming up, so maybe we'll catch you then. Bye, Pete. Okay. And close the ammo. Nice. Okay, so I think we could do that. That should be nice. And we don't need the MIDI anymore. So for like a quick arrangement, what I might do is like reverse these bell things and pitch those down like an octave or something. Something like that. Cool. Cool, so now we need some percussion, so like just something. So now we get to break out Berserker. Hmm. I wonder if we had like, yeah, that harp. Oh, now you're not responding to MIDI. Why? Nobody knows. Um, hmm. Preferences. Reset MIDI. Okay. Nope, you're still receiving it. Oh. Got it. Not the keyboard or the DAW, it's just me being dumb. That could be, maybe. Maybe some like metal percussive stuff. Just give me a sequence. And three. Kind of cool. Still a little too organic. Maybe. That could work. Because I like the metal because it's like, you know, robots and stuff. But that, that still feels a little too... I don't know, almost like symphonic. Hmm. 
Maybe that would work. I don't like that rhythm, but I like that sound. Luckily, there's like 83 trillion... Honestly, that could work something nice and simple and just throw some delay on that. That would come in in the second half here. So we just need another layer. Something a little more like, you know, it's like straightforward. Uh, ooh, yeah. High pitch Christmas bells. <laughs> we just we just make Christmas music. That would be like main drums, main drums, main drums. Get a filter. Yeah. I think that would work. All right. I think the patterns are too similar. So how about, could we get something a little more? Instead of percussion, buildups, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, that works. Uh, and then the bells are gonna happen on the outro and then the reverse bells, we could duplicate, whoops, don't do that. Uh, we could duplicate the reverse bell. Nope. There we go. And we could use that as like a swell thing by doing the Paul stretch algorithm. And we'll shift it up an octave, question mark. Something like that, just to like, you know, sneak us into different sections. Yeah. In the game.
game Grounded. I have yet to play Grounded. Need to play that one. Heard really good things. I'm gonna distort that riser even more. Nice and simple. Easy. That's how most game music works. <laughs> Just like, don't distract the player. Okay, so I wonder if we were like legitimately playing the game and we're just like creeping around. Probably be about that loud. Yeah, okay, so let's hear in context, the final product. Not too shabby. Uh, ambient Q1. Um, the build drums, but, 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 those are too bright. And I mean, obviously, we would need to do some more mixy stuff because, like, full beans. Honestly, I could just throw like a ladder filter on this. Something along those lines. Pretty close. And then you might add like a... Just to make that riser bit a little more interesting. And then maybe some drops. You know, something. Just to juice it up a little bit. But given that this would be an ambient cue in the game... Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't want a ton to happen. Could probably even go more minimal with it, to be honest. Um, that being said, we're not here for minimal. We're here for goddamn 80s combat robot killing music. So let's do some of that. Because that's what this drum library is like fucking amazing for. Uh, let's find some combat footage. Yeah, right around here. All right, so combat. 
I threw a flare. Thoughts on the third wave? Um... I don't have too many. I mean, it's a great sense. It sounds huge. Uh, Four-part multi-tambral school. You know, big fan of multi-tambral stuff. I like the layering you could do. The pan-spreading knob is nice because the voices will pan out like on the polybrute. Um, yeah, I I dig it. And I like the uh, low-pass is actual analog filter, and I'm pretty sure it's an analog saturation in there. I actually only unboxed it like a couple days ago. It sat here for like almost two weeks. I've just been so fucking busy, I haven't had any time to do anything. Um, and I've really wanted to get back to making music, which is, like, part of the reason I did this stream tonight. Yeah, overall, really, really good. has that, like, super big... I don't know. Like, when you think of a polysynth, that's what this is. <laughs> like, just in the sense that you play a big fucking chord and you're like, yeah, brother. <laughs> um, I like... Uh, one of the other touches on it is it's four part multi timbral. You have four outputs on the back, so one for each. But the effects, you have two effect slots, and you can actually have different effects on all four parts, which is really, really cool. Um, I think dislikes. Uh, I don't like programming patches on it, if I'm being honest. It reminds me a lot of the kernels engine in the Iridium, where it's just kind of tedious but when you have a synth that has so many features like that's just bound to happen you know and i i haven't had enough time with it to really say either way i'm sure like if you know i got hired to program a sound bank on it yeah i could do that but it's just it's a lot and that's cool and that's like the iridium it's exceptionally powerful and it does a lot but the nature of doing a lot is it takes fucking forever to patch something. You know, it's not like a Juno where it's like you turn it on and it makes great sounds right away. And you could tweak every knob on it and still have a great sound. Um, I There was a sound bank by someone on YouTube I thought about picking up. But, like, given I'm only borrowing this for a couple weeks, I don't really want to buy a patch bank for it. That I'm, you know, then it's going to get shit back to Groove Synthesis and I'm never going to see it again. Um, but I'm tempted to buy it just to... I don't know, here's some other stuff from it. Um, other downsides to it, I don't like the patch management. Um, there's four banks with 100 patches each, I believe. At least on this one, I don't know if that's like the default factory stuff. Uh, there's no categories, which is super tedious. So if I'm going through patches, I have to go through one at a time. Maybe there are categories and I haven't figured it out yet, but I don't think there are. And... Uh, when you switch patch banks, if I'm on patch 50 in bank A and I go to bank B, it'll put me on patch 50 in bank B. So if I'm scrolling through all the presets and I'm at patch 100 in that bank and I go to the next bank, it's in patch 100 at that bank. So then I have to go back down. And like logically, that makes no sense to me. <laughs> um, the sequencer is cool. ARP is cool. A lot of movement you could do with it. And you know, I think that's kind of this one's superpower is it's just great at pads and shit. Uh, you know, and I like the... I guess I should queue up the MIDI and stuff here anyway. Um, I do really like the analog style sounds out of it. Because I was talking to Jeremy, uh, Red Means Recording, about it. And, yeah, and Reaper, it doesn't like... Oh, I didn't send the output. Nope, it still just doesn't like Reaper for some fucking reason. Okay. Let's reboot it again. Um, but yeah, like the big poly, you know, saw wave patches and stuff are great. It does amazing atmospheres and keys and bells and stuff. Uh, I think the thing I like about it over the Iridium is probably the analog filter sound. Like it just feels more satisfying with big filter sweeps, but... You know, the Iridium does a lot of what this does, so. It's, I don't know, very, like, I feel like I've already done a lot of what this does, but this is really fucking good. <laughs> you know, it's just really, really good at that one thing. But yeah, like, there's a couple... Yeah, like, big filter...
stuff like that. Uh... Yeah, these types of sounds on this are just immensely satisfying. And yeah, these like glassy pads. Great for that. Yeah, here's another big like Oberheim. Uh, yeah, we could go full screen for a sec on the camera. So this is it here. Yeah, a lot of a lot of stink. And it has a lot of the original PPG factory patches, which is cool. And yeah, like wavetable wise. one I don't know what bank it was in and this is why I'd like categories of like leads So I love those sounds from it. You know, that's uh, just a very, very satisfying synth to play. Um, I Yeah, the, the patch browsing thing is probably my biggest, like, eh about it. It does have a favorite function but like just you know if I'm doing something like this like if I'm actually composing something or writing music and whatever and I'm like flipping through shit I don't want to go through patches like that I want to just say bass you know and whatever which and I, I guess the polybrute kind of has like similar patch management stuff but you know the iridium just remains my golden standard for like UI <laughs> and UX for something so complicated um, but yeah so that's that's the third wave in a nutshell. Speaking of, let's make some combat music. Uh, so what were we doing? We're... Uh, I think the natural thing to start with here is like just a drum whoops contact just give me <laughs> sure let's start off with just big hits Gonna need to grab a bus compressor thing just for a little bit of juice on the goose, and then a limiter for the session. Okay, so. Maybe like a hundred and forty. Uh, 
What's the what's the tempo of like the machine gun? It's about 140. More like 130 probably, but maybe we'll use that rhythm. <laughs> Once again back, it's the incredible live Cameron. Um, something like that. Uh, so I don't know that we could use this for drums, but we'll, let's just lay down some hits. So starting here, buh, 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 that's eight bars. Two, three, four, so that gives us a nice 32. Okay, so that's hits, and I just want to get like a groove going so we can kind of feel out the vibe of the synth stuff we want to add. There's just so much stuff in this library. Which, like, is a good thing and a bad thing, because I like when libraries are insanely comprehensive, but, like, fuck, it's just, like, well, what do I want to use? Yeah. Sure. I don't know, something like that just to Yeah, something like that. And then we just need like some you know. Shasha. And Why is that, like, timing weird? It's just too much happening. Uh, fills. I don't need, like, climax. Yeah, I just need... Okay, and then another percussive layer. So this is like accent hits. So we need something a little more. <laughs> oh god oh i want to like distort that i just put a reverb on it the fart horn oh my god i'm like tearing up that was really fucking funny that was awful oh god i could not have been involved in the recording sessions for that I would have got kicked out immediately. Okay, how about some war drum grooves? 
four drums, medium. Yeah, something like that. Okay, so go. One and... Just get like some top percussion maybe going. Oh my god, that was so fucking funny. Hmm. Can we throw some of those on? And um, bink, 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 bink. a shaker sort of thing. Is that the groove that's like already on it? Maybe this one. I wish that the groove that it's playing was what loaded with it. Just go ahead and render that one for me, Reaper. And that way I can just make some quick swells and stuff. And that. And just. Shit. Move that. What? Yeah. Copy both. No? Okay. Whatever. Okay, so something like that. Uh, this could come in in the second half, and like this could come in in the second half. Let's get a drum bus. Down. Just like a 
little bit of reverb just to glue all the drums together. Right. Okay. So synths. One. Yeah, that could kind of work as a... Okay, too much pitch bend. Uh, that's under miscellaneous. Yeah, yeah, there we go, okay. And give me a, probably just like some black hole and some distortion. good enough for now. Jason's out. All right. And last big one. Sure. Okay. Think. on that yeah something like that one and two probably just, it's probably all we really need just to accent like the main things. And then some more textures. Mm. A lot of reverb on that one. like a lead with some like chamber I don't know if like combat music really needs a lead but
try it. Definitely needs an ARP, though. That's kind of cool. What if it was just like way more distorted? <laughs> It's not the greatest, but it'll do. like that. Something like that. It just needs like a call and response. Uh, uh, so miscellaneous pitch bend. Breathalyzer. What's up, man? Um, okay, so something like that. 
One and two, man. Yeah, something like that. Uh. Something like that, we're just like ping, ping, ping. One. Sounding good. Needs more. Needs the ARP. Classic ARP. Uh, have you tried Cinematic Rooms by Liquid Sonics? I have not. Uh, combat 3. Um. <laughs> oh, yeah. Can we work that in? <laughs> Too much. Uh, all the synth stuff is the third wave here from Groove Synthesis. What if we what if we just made like a pad underneath all this stuff to like glue it together a little more? Hardware. No. Ah, and Reaper fucking froze it again. Now we gotta reboot it. Um, okay, we've been going for like an hour, hour and a half, so I got 30 minutes to just like fucking finish this. Definitely needs more percussion, but we can handle that relatively quickly. I'm not as concerned with that part. this transition into the second half feel a bit more interesting.
Okay. There we go. Seemed like an ARP. Yeah. Okay, so can we just like do that? One, two, three, four, one. Mm -hmm. How about I'll just make my own sound? How about that? Uh, global program. Two octaves in the down direction. How about that? Three, four, one. Damn it. Fucking Reaper and the clock, I swear to God. Okay. Do this the long way. Okay, and then does that just kind of fill out things a little bit more? I just want to—I want to hear this without the drums for a sec, just to make sure our like music is fine. So that's where we need like a big transition. So the drums and stuff need to cue out here. So we will just grab all this stuff, push it back, give ourselves a big old drum hit right there. Something like that. Okay, so now. Swell. Yeah. 
Yeah, okay. So let's work in some drums. Uh, I think I'm just going to... I'm just going to use one of my own sample packs because, I mean, that's like literally why I make these. <laughs> simple drum loop would work better. Whoops. Beep, 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 beep. And then cut that right there. What time is it? 15 minutes. Cut there. one of my drum loops in the second half here just to make it more bigger <laughs> Oh, that would work nicely. Just for something really big. Okay, so eight bar. <laughs> Cool, and that's gonna sound like fucking chaos right now because contact does not like to stay in time with things. Okay, cool. And we need more like top percussion for the second. <laughs> Yeah, maybe just some crowd noises. Um, while the recent DAW switching, I mean, I haven't really switched DAWs in a minute. I used Bitwig last recently. That was like two years ago? Year ago? Year ago. Don't know. Um, you know, just use what works best. And yeah, long story short, Bitwig was no longer fucking worth it. Oh, those are in triplets. Claps. Straight. But yeah, like for, you know, all the work I do anymore, Reaper just makes more sense between sound design and like scoring stuff. And I know there's some really big... Uh, like pre-composed drum kits. I 
Maybe like another groove there. Whoops. Um. That's a little too much. That's way too fucking busy, so we could probably thin the herd here a bit. Okay, so music-wise, there's more to do. So that's going to be like the last section here. And then... there for like just a breather. Just so we don't lose like all the energy. Hmm. Or do we kind of like... Yeah. Okay, so that leaves us with one more job here, and that is like downers and such. Little signature hits. So I want the hits category. Probably. Okay. Cool. Just to give myself a couple accent things to toss in. Okay, so like the main cue starts here. Okay, and then 
like maybe maybe there's just like one other There's like stuff on here. solo thing here. Where's the game? Okay. Not that sound, but maybe. There we go. That's like super 80s. That's kind of cool. Just gotta distort the fuck out of it. <laughs> That's how you make music. I think that would work. sick. Okay, so right there I want that. Except it's panned out. But that big That's that's killer right there. Yeah, that fucks. Okay, so that... Um, maybe this lead thing here in like the beginning. Let's just do it, and then we'll call it.
We need this stuff. Whoops. Gotta. <sighs> Damn you, Cubase. Or Reaper, not Cubase. Wrong daughter blame. Something like that. Okay, something. And then that's this one. Cool, are we done? I mean, I think we're done for a stream. Maybe we'll have this like big effect hit here in the beginning too. And then it needs. Maybe that ARP doesn't come in right away. Uh, just another accent here. Small. Little transition thing. Whoops, actually right there. Uh, fuck. Right? 20, okay. And then do this and this. Some, some, something. And then just to make everything feel better, we'll just add master Q widening. Okay. Uh, let's see. Combat music, and then... Oh wait, we gotta bus all this together. So this is the music, this is all the stuff, goes in the music folder. Music. And then, yeah, like how loud is this gonna be in the game? Okay, so combat, whoops, fuck, combat starts here. Jesus Christ, that game is so loud in the combat. Okay, let's get like the game at a sensible volume. Fuck's sake. Not too terrible. Uh, yeah, let's give that one more listen here. Another tipping. Al Capone, hey, thank you. Uh, fellow Cameron, what's up? Uh, 
Adding those quick break and resume elements frequently. Yeah, uh, we can do questions here in just a sec, actually. Good, good time to do that. All right, so final product, combat music in the game. Go. That's just a random synth fart that should not be there. Not too bad. Yeah, um, you know, there's a lot that could be done. And I, I, some criticisms I would have of this is it's too trailery. The music definitely needs rebalance. And I think I would extend out the arrangement a fair bit here. I mean, obviously, we're only making like 32 bars of music. So there's only so much you could do within 32 bars. But if I was really going to do this... Um, I think I would start by just doubling everything and trying to minimize as many elements of it as I can. So maybe this ARP doesn't even queue in until like here. You know, we don't even have this lead line. You know, the first segments are maybe very, very sparse. Just like that, all we need. Because we're building combat. Have a break. Definitely still like way too much happening with these drums. So we could probably just kind of do that again. some more intensity in the synth lines here. But this is more of a structure I would follow for this sort of project. So now we've got, you know, a clean 64 bars, and then I would probably double this once more just to get more like A, B, C, D sections and start arranging that way. Um, okay. Questions and such. Uh, so tonight's stream was the game was uh, Generation Zero. This game on Steam. It's very, very fun. It's 25 bucks, and then there's like some DLC packs. 
not really necessary. Um, there are some DLC, well, the, like, base warfare and resistance stuff adds, like, more to the game, but that's the game. Uh, very, very fun. And everything you heard tonight was done with the Groove Synthesis third wave, and then all the drums and stuff are this library called Berserker, except it's spelled in, like, runes or something, uh, from Keep Forest, so that's content and cue to the other camera there we go all right questions and stuff uh is this final no uh this is just and yeah just for fun yeah just making music i've i got to borrow the third wave here and keep forest sent berserker to me so i Figured I would just do a stream playing with them because I don't do gear videos and stuff. So that was kind of why. And I thought that, you know, being sort of an 80s inspired synth and then like Viking war drums and stuff, this would be the perfect game to like make some music for is like Viking 80s synth stuff of robots. <laughs> so just kind of a for fun project. Um, Difficult for a game to decide where to stop and continue. Yes and no. Um, so if I was passing this off to the audio lead in a game, I would work with them in like F mod and stuff to say like, here are the points where the song fades out. So there would be some dynamic choices. And it wouldn't be edited like this where, you know, it would the music would stop on one of those swells. You could do that, but it would just be really complicated. <laughs> so instead, you know, it would just be like, here's... 64 bars of stuff or you know 128 bars of stuff and then like at bar 16 32 64 128 whatever these are the points where it could fade out nicely or structure the music so that every eight bars or so it could kind of cleanly fade out uh, well done thank you uh did i miss any other questions doesn't look like it. Cool. Um, yeah, I will leave it open for another, like, five minutes. F-Mod is sick. F-Mod is cool. Yeah, I've... There's a... There's a music artist who makes, like, music in F-Mod, which was really interesting. Uh, musician... And they make, like, really cool generative stuff. I think this was it. J Junas Turner? J-O-O-N-A-S Turner. Uh, yeah, built in F-Mod. I think that's who it was. It was really cool to think of F-Mod more as a DAW. What's your favorite type of game to compose to? Um... You know, mostly, like, action stuff. I'm pretty basic. I like games where I, like, run around and shoot shit. Uh, and things blow up. That's that's my addiction. I'm pretty... Pretty fucking generic in that aspect. Um, ah, fuck. And then... You know, atmospheric games. I really like, you know... Stuff where... Big open world, very vibey. Where I can do more dark, ambient... Stuff. The super chat question. Uh, oh, right. That was it. Uh, quick break and resume elements. Sure. Um, and this mostly comes from the world of like trailer music. But let's say we're making... like Let's just say this is a D&B song, okay? And these 32 bars are my drop. So we're going to listen... So, you know, naturally, right, every 4, 8, 16, 32 bars or something, that's kind of your transition point. But one of the key things you want to listen for with this kind of stuff, like especially as we get into the second half that's really busy, there's just a lot of shit happening. <laughs>
Without these little breaks and stuff, the problem is there's just so much happening that your ears really start to get fatigued against the frequency content. You know, if we have a, or let's get decibel up. And mind you, this isn't mixed other than just like levels. You know, there'd be a lot of uh, finessing I would want to do here just to get the low end under control and things like that. But, you know, if we just watch the graphs here. <laughs> We could see there's just a fuck ton of low end. And then right there, that little break just gives us so much power. Whereas if we were continuing on all of the drums and stuff here, by the time we get to that point, um, this isn't going to be great, but you'll get the idea. <laughs> Like, that hit comes in, but there's no power behind it because we've hit 100%. You know, this is as loud and as big as this is going to get. So if I'm going 16 straight bars, you know, there's no, like, hold on, and then we're back. You know, it's kind of like basic structure of, you know, a drop, right? We have our intro, we have our, like, 16-bar build to the drop, and then the drop happens. So we just want to listen for little edit points where we could add some intensity. So in this case... As the melody's going down there, if I really wanted to... It would be here... I could add a different change up to where this is all going to stop right on that. Ba -da -da -da. And, you know, that might add a lot of... Oh God, there's like so much shit happening. And let's say, yeah, I want to cut to like halftime here. You know, this would be a good way to do that, where I'm like building and we've got all this stuff happening. So you just kind of want to listen for natural points where you might say like, and hold. You know what I mean? <laughs> like if we were directing... A big orchestra or something like, and pause, and big stinger. Bah! So you just find those little points and then find ways to swell into them. You know, little risers, little accents, little things. So like in the ambient theme, uh, file, recent. You know, one of the tricks you could do for more subtle stuff is just, what I did here was pitch shift one of the reverse swells and just distorted it. And that's creeping in here over the course of like four bars. But if I wanted that to be a little more tense, I could rise that up and just like stop everything for just a moment. And that way, you know, when this next section comes in with these drums, instead of rising in and hearing all that, now we're going to get... Just, you know, it builds a little bit, it changes a little bit, and that's the point of those little edit points, is just to evolve things to where... Once you've hit that threshold of like, this is as much shit as I can throw at you at the same time, you've got to back off in some way. And usually that's just by subtraction. So that's kind of my favorite way to arrange those little edit moments is take everything and take away a couple things at a time until we've got a little thing. And I'm going to accent that moment either with complete and utter silence or a little swell, a little rise, a little something just to keep your ear interested to provide contrast.
Um, writing Zelda music for fun. Uh, yeah, maybe we could do that for another stream. You know, I'm not not a super big orchestral type music person. It's just not my favorite. But, you know, it could be fun because we could maybe do something a little different. Break out the... Uh, good old harp or something. You know, get some nice... You know, something. Get some big strings. I've got contact libraries for that kind of thing. But yeah, orchestral stuff's just not my vibe. I'm not, you know, a classically trained musician, so I know very, very little about arranging for an orchestra besides just the absolute dead basics. But, you know, it could be an interesting project just to, you know, try something different. Um, do you use the global sampler script? Uh, no. I have heard of it, though. Great stream. Glad you liked it. Would you do an in-depth tutorial on how you make your decent sampler libraries? Yes, I already did. Uh, it's on my Patreon page, uh, which I'm not signed into right now, I don't think. Um, let's see. VenusTheory.com slash patrons. If you become a patron... You, too, can get access to how I make sample packs, designing IRs, mixing, mastering, decent sampler instrument design, and a bunch of free sample packs and decent sampler instruments and project files and wavetables and all sorts of bullshit. Uh, so, yeah, I already did that where I go through, like, every single thing of how I make instruments. Which do you think is a better choice for independent artists? Uh, to release more albums or more single tracks? I don't really know. Um, I think that's just an artistic decision more than anything. I mean, pragmatically, if your goal is to like get Spotify streams, then yeah, just put out fucking singles constantly because that's you know how you're going to please the playlisters. But. You know, if you're creating, like, a more comprehensive body of work, I, I don't see why you wouldn't do an album just to say, like, here is everything and here is how it all fits together. But if the goal is, like, churning out music and getting as many streams as possible, it's probably a bit more pragmatic to work on singles. But, yeah, I think that's just an artistic choice more than anything. You know, like, I've, I've worked on tracks and whatever that are just, like, a standalone, here is a thing. And then I've made tracks that are like, oh, this is going to be part of a greater body of work. So, you know, I, I don't think it matters, but I'm probably not the person to ask because, like, I could give a fuck <laughs> most of the time. So, you know, but that being said, most of the YouTube advice gurus are just going to have stupid fucking answers anyway. Do what feels good, you know, make music, and when it's done, it's done, and if it's an album, then great, and if it's just a single and it works on its own, perfect. I don't see an issue with either approach. Um, inspired to do a soundtrack and sound design remake for this game now. Yeah, go for it. Super, super fun. Good way to freshen up the old noodle. This is what I like to do a lot of the times, too, just to work different parts of my brain and, you know, practice scoring, basically, right? You know, because when you get hired for a gig, you never know what it's going to be, and that's kind of why I wanted to do this stream with this game, because, like, what if you did get hired to do a game that's, like, it's in the 80s, but it's giant mega robots but it's like very action heavy, but also very stealthy. What does that sound like musically? You know, and if you don't exercise those creative parts of your noodle now and again, how, you know, how do you expect to do things? And it's nice to, you know, like the Zelda example earlier, just to do something very different. Um, one of the last like practice things I was doing was uh, like a racing game. I saw there were, can't remember his name now. Um, I don't know. Another YouTuber did like a, a cartoony, you know, Fortnite looking racing game. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. So, I, you know, just wrote some music against that as the game of just what would this sound like? How would I do this? And, you know, I may never get picked for a gig like that. And I, I probably won't. Not necessarily my strong suit. But 
in doing those things, it lets me take ideas from that into like my bread and butter, you know, things I'm actually very good at. And, uh, you know, I think the same works for music, like writing in a different style or getting out of your comfort zone. Like it might sound like shit, but you'll probably learn a lot. And music being so universal, most of what you learn will probably apply to your usual things. Um, mangling audio. Yeah, yeah, maybe I should get that. Uh, I want to create my own decent sample library. There's no idea how to code. Um, yeah, it, it's really not hard. Uh, all of decent samplers coded in XML, and there's also a boilerplate file. Uh, let me find that. So yeah, if you really, really wanted to get into it, there is actually just a stock file on the Decent Sampler website. So you can copy all this code, paste it, and then just replace the samples, and you would have a functional Decent Sampler instrument. It's really, really easy. And like most of the adding knobs and other things and adding a custom UI is not nearly as hard as you would think. Because even implementing something more involved um like one of the most complicated libraries we built david and i built together was probably interlaced here i don't know what's a good sound from it whatever and this was just you know building graphics but the code i could copy and paste every single slider like the code for it and just move it in the x and y domain and then my controls are done but this was really heavy because it was a lot of custom graphics, whereas something more like um, yeah, Hunter's Ampex Ecosystems. Something like this is just using the default decent sampler UI assets and then he just added a background image. So you don't have to get as fancy as you know, custom UIs and stuff, but if you do, it's you know, not that difficult. This is Isometra. And this is all stock decent sampler images. I just designed a background image around those controls because this was before you could do custom graphics. And then eventually, as I started building different instruments, this is where I started to design my own knobs and uh, convolution responses and stuff because then decent sampler supported custom graphics. So you don't have to go all that far. I just think it's a nice touch, but yeah. Um, so a matter of building up and then removing everything and back into the theme. Uh, initial sketch. You know, it's reverse verb. Yeah, I mean, a lot of that stuff, you know, if we were doing like a trailer track or something, you just kind of learn... You know, it's like making drum and bass, right? Like, you just know, oh, I don't know the different amen breaks. Like, you know, there's names for the different breaks, but, oh, this break versus this break. Like, if I'm writing something more up-tempo, you know, in the style of, like, Coven or, you know, something like that, okay, then this break is going to be more suited to that vibe, whereas, like, the standard amen break is going to be more, like, heavy jungle or something, you know what I mean? So I think, yeah, like, arranging-wise... That's my usual thing. And, and that works particularly well in this style of, well, this world of music, you know, trailer music and like composing for games and shit. Because most of the time, I just build the biggest section of everything. So, you know, like this ambient cue we did here. This, more often than not, if I was writing this from scratch, which we did, you know, you can rewatch the stream, but like, I'll build into this sort of thing. And I'll write that. I just want a really solid 32 to 64 bars of shit. And then I'll start cutting and pasting this together to build an actual, you know, four or five minute arrangement, 10 minute arrangement, whatever. And then over time, you know, like if I did build out this whole arrangement here, you know, starting in this midsection, I might do something really minimal. And then by 
this kind of B section. I want to get rid of this stuff, but I might want to introduce some new stuff and something like that. But that's kind of the core thing is just, you know, again, it's just that energy cycle of I've already I've already given everything I can away. You know, this is as big as the song gets and it can't go bigger. Like we could keep adding stuff, but as we saw with the combat queue is you, if you keep adding shit, it just gets too busy. So that's where we start to just take all these elements and pull them out into different sections and that builds a more solid arrangement that feels a bit more cohesive. And then within those transition points, we'll know that like, okay, the drums that go those have been going on for a long time. So that rhythm isn't really factoring into what I'm understanding about the song. So I might fade that out. And as that fades out, you know, a big synth. And, you know, if I want that drop to be really heavy, I might need to minimize everything else that's going on. And then the melody goes. But let's say the melody repeats, you know, like A, B, A, B structure melody. On that second B cycle, we want, you know, things to come back to A, but if it just goes back to A from an A, B, A, B section, that gets a bit boring. So maybe in that B section of the melody, we listen for bah, 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 and we have this one, you know, sustained note in our melody or something. That could be an accent point. We want to punch that up. So then when everything else comes back in, it, it feels like a variation, even though it's going to be the same shit you've already been hearing, just put together a different way. <laughs> um, which I guess that's all of music ultimately isn't it <laughs> but yeah you know reverse reverbs risers downers sub downers big drum hits you know even little identity things like you don't have to do big sub hits and big drum hits that's just kind of what we were doing because that was the tools i was trying to limit myself to for this stream but you know for something more unique especially in the world of like trailer music or if you're doing really big cinematic D, &D even just like a weird foley one shot or you know, like a cello note or whatever, you know, listen to like uh, the soundtrack of Saw or uh, Dead Space is another great one. Um, and, and if you go to like the Universal Music Library or something where it's like just a world of trailer music, you'll hear lots of interesting identity hits uh, made of, you know, all sorts of weird shit. Um, do you have any... Creative VSTs, scripts, or other sound design tools you feel are essential to your creative workflow. Um, yeah, I mean, I've built my own decent sampler instruments. I've got a ton of presets I've made myself on, like, my Iridium and my Polybrute and such. I've built a couple contact instruments over the years. I don't really use them as much anymore just because I kind of got out of contact. Um, but a couple custom contact instruments where I could just drag in a sample and, like, you know, there's macros in it that turn it into a riser. Over time, I've mostly been rebuilding those inside of Falcon um, to where, you know, I can, like, drag and drop stuff into a Falcon patch and then automate different things to build a bunch of risers and things like that. Uh, so, yeah, not really anything too phenomenally unique. I use Phase Plant for pretty much everything synthesis because it's just, like, one of the most powerful synth plugins out there. Uh, Falcon is pretty much anything related to sampling. And then Falcon also has synth engines, so I can you know, supplement sample things with synth stuff, which could be useful. Like if I if I have some acoustic toms I've recorded, I might take those into Falcon and add like a sine wave and add a pitch envelope to that sine wave so then the toms have this huge like 40 hertz, you know, feel. Um, yeah, nothing really too special. I mean, contact libraries, the Falcon stuff I've built, UVI expansions, just all my custom presets and my decent sampler instruments. Try and keep it pretty straightforward, I guess. Um, Mixing-wise, you know, PSP and Finistrip is a huge one for me just because I really like mixing with channel strips because I can just focus more. It's really easy to get caught up in all the minutia and all the tweaky bullshit, and nine times out of ten, the end product you know, doesn't benefit much from that, especially when it comes to the user listening to it. Like, they just don't fucking care if you, you know, used, like, 18 bands of dynamic EQ because I read on the music production subreddit from this guy that, like, that's the way Mr. Bill did it. And, you know, I'm sure Mr. Bill would be just as quick to tell you that, like, just do shit that sounds good and make shit. Um, 
so yeah, like in finish strips, a big thing for me just to make sure mixing is under control. And uh, yeah, you know, usual stuff like Eventide Black Hole, Ultraverb, Newfangled Generate. I really like that for synth stuff. Um, nothing too particularly unique I can think of. Uh, do you think that music as entertainment is overall music as art? Who cares about art these days? It's just shutting your mind down. People. Yeah, I've thought about doing a video about that for a while, of like the commoditization of music. Um, I think, you know, music for art still certainly exists. I don't think that's ever going to go away, but I don't think that's the purpose a lot of music serves anymore because everything just became fucking content. Um, I just think it's a lot harder to find musicians who are true, pure artists in that sense. You know, everything in the popular arena at least eventually just becomes like tick tockified <laughs> but i i don't think that like it's ever gonna die but yeah i think the the contentification of music if that's even a way to put it i think that's a big thing where most people in the broad sense of like consumers look at music in a very different way now maybe just because it's everywhere and everyone is a music producer and everything is possible you know you know like you can you can know next to nothing about music and make a fucking great sounding record with the tools we have access to now especially like the free stuff you can get you know like vital complete start blah 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 blah. there's even free DAWs and you know there's free vital presets that are amazing and whatever so I think it's it's a problem but it's only a problem and it's only going to bother you if you let it like if it's discouraging to you to think like god music is just content now then like don't make fucking content. You know, if you if you just don't enjoy making music, you don't have to. And if you feel like it's going to be a defeating process and it's not going to make you happy, then, like, don't waste time on it. But if you truly do love music and you love making music as an art form, then just pursue that as hard as you fucking can. Because, like, one, you're going to die anyway. And in a thousand years, no one's going to remember you exist. Two who cares like the goal of all this stuff should just be having fun with it and creating something you think is valuable and you know three it may work out you never know and i think that's where i don't know the the contentification of music and the music as art sort of collide because the music that's made for the sake of artistic merit i think tends to float above that and even influence all the other stuff you know, when we think of Taylor Swift's impact on the music industry or something like Taylor Swift had kind of a unique pop sensibility and did some interesting things. And that kind of dribbled down, you know, Billie Eilish popped off doing music for art's sake. And now every fucking song is like a Billie Eilish knockoff. So, you know, don't be afraid to pursue the more artsy fartsy aspects of it. Are people going to shit on you for it? Absolutely. Is people... You know, are people going to say your music sucks and you should just go make dubstep? Probably. But fuck those people anyway, because they're not going to tell you how to do your own thing right. You know, everybody on the Internet knows everything better than you do, especially when it comes to music, because, you know, everybody on KVR is like the world's greatest fucking musician. So I wouldn't worry about it. It is a problem. But it, again, it's only a problem if you let it be like we could sit here all night and debate that. But fact of the matter is. I, and I'm sure you, just want to make fucking music anyway. <laughs> like, Is most popular music shitty and boring? Yes. Does that impact my ability to make and enjoy music? No. Is it better for me to just keep those thoughts out of my head because I know that I'm the only one introducing them to myself and sitting there obsessing on them? Might be worth just, like, shutting that part of the faucet off and making shit anyway. You know. I uh, love your infiltrator presets. Thank you. Um... incorporate those tips in well yeah hopefully hopefully something comes of it um a good budget synth i mean vital you know vital's free to start um vital pro is only 80 bucks and yeah for like under 100 bucks that's like that's obscenely fucking powerful you know vital's pretty ridiculous um you know other than that there's a lot of good subtractive synths out there like charlatan is free uh odin 2 is free surge i mean surge is free and surge is 
you know, even reaching into the caliber of faceplant stuff. Surge is one of the most fucking powerful plugins out there. Um, yeah, you know, lots of good stuff. I, I would probably say, you know, Charlatan and OBXD, except it, like the licensing on OBXD is weird now. Um, vital to an extent, you know, something like that that's mostly subtractive based is probably the best way to start. Because FM and phase mod and wavetables and such get really fucking complicated. And I think that can be pretty overwhelming. Um, but if you know your way around kind of the core idea of synthesis, Vital's probably the way to go. Or Surge, if you want to go even further. Uh, get your hands on Halion. Um, I don't know. I, may, I might have a license for Halion. I haven't really messed with it, though. I know it's exceptionally powerful, but, like, it's so tied into the Cubase ecosystem. But I think you can use Halion as a plugin in other DAWs. Uh, I'm pretty sure in saying that. So I haven't really messed with it. It's a really powerful platform. Um, I've worked with some stuff that was built in Halion that was really impressive. But I don't know. Halion just, I've never gotten into it. And, like, I don't know. It's just another thing to learn. You know what I mean? And I, I just want to make shit. I don't constantly want to be reading manuals and whatever. <laughs> so, you know, I'm sure it's really, really cool. The stuff I've seen built with it is really impressive, but I haven't dived into it, and it's pretty unlikely that I would unless I just found myself with, like, six months of spare time. <laughs> Mind-numbing ca cable management and listening, watching. Well, hey, Bonsai Panda, glad you enjoyed it. Um, oh, meant a hardware synth, sorry. Uh, man, a hardware synth... Yeah, the Archeria Micro Freak and Archeria Mini Freak. Uh, I mean, fuck, for the money, I, I don't know anything that beats those. The Mini Freak especially being, like, polyphonic, having all of those sound engines, having onboard effects... The sequencer, the filter, um, you know, it's dual layer, so you can have, like, two layers of sound engines, the the mod matrix, I, and it's, I don't, I don't know what the price is on it now, I think it went, it either went up or went down again, prices for everything are fucking weird anymore, Archeria, I want to say it's about $400 used or so. I feel like I've seen them go for about that on Reverb. New, they're five ninety nine, and okay on Reverb they've gone up a bit too. So on Reverb they're like four hundred and fifty to five hundred. Um, six hundred new versus the Micro Freak is three hundred and fifty new. Um, but the Micro Freak is paraphonic and not polyphonic, which may or may not be annoying if you have the capability to swing it i mean the mini freak is insanely insanely fucking good and it's accessible while being interesting like i don't think that's a synth you get bored of very easily you know i'm i'm pretty pretty deep into the world of this fucking bullshit and i still love that thing um, that's the one that normally sits up here Why Reaper? Uh, Reaper for sound design and scoring. You know, it does. It has really great video support, and for you know scoring stuff for games and such, uh, it integrates really well with like FMOD and Wise. And for sound design, uh, you know, batch processing. Like if I if I'm working on a piano library and I need to run 800 different samples through the same effects chain, I can do that in Reaper, and then export them all with a specific name to specific folders and whatever, and I can do all that with, like, a key command. So, just, you know, pragmatically, it, it just makes the most sense. Um, Matthew Pakin? Probably butchering that, sorry. Relatively new to making music. I uh, wanted to ask, do you need to spend a lot of money to get professional quality sounds? I'm a student on a budget. Absolutely not. Um, you know, kind of like I talked about a minute ago, Complete Start, Vital, Surge, Odin 2, you know, all, all the free sample packs out there. I mean, Jesus Christ, there's so many good free sample packs. You know, Music Radar, um, 
all that kind of stuff. There's tons of free resources, Reddit drum kits thing. Well, Reddit drum kits is like mostly pirated bullshit, but whatever. Um, yeah, I mean, there's just so many good free plugins and stuff anymore. The Project Sam Community Orchestra, like there's a whole fucking orchestral library. Decent Sampler has tons of free stuff. I mean, I make free shit for Decent Sampler. Um, yeah, I mean, I... I've been considering a video on that for a while. Um, ben Jordan and Jeremy and myself were talking about doing a video of like three professional musicians, zero dollars, where we each pick like a free DAW and free plugins. And then like we just give ourselves like a pair of headphones and like, uh, you know, like an Archeria mini fuse that's like a $99 like basic interface and just make a song with it. But I, I don't know. I don't like those types of videos. I think it's a great concept for one. And maybe that would be a good stream. Uh, maybe for Charity Stream Week this year, which is in like two weeks. Uh, yeah, maybe for Charity Stream Week one night, that could be kind of fun. It's like, let's make a song for free and see what we could do. Um, and I've done free plug-in videos where I've shown different things. I, I swear I did a video on that at one point. But yeah, I, I don't think you need to spend a ton of money. As long as you have a decent audio interface, a good MIDI controller... You know, and even that will set you back maybe two or three hundred bucks, depending on you know what size of MIDI controller you get, because even the small ones are like ninety nine bucks for some of them. Um, yeah, good set of headphones, a good audio interface, your DAW, which you know free DAWs are fine. You know, I've, I've fucked with Cakewalk and I I liked it a couple of years ago when I was messing with it. Um, you know, like investment wise, and like the kilohertz plugins, the free kilohertz bundle i mean fuck dude that's so much good shit for free and that's like all you need to mix a song <laughs> um and your doll probably already comes with all that stuff you know or equivalents to it yeah i i don't know where i would invest the money honestly these days other than like a microphone if you you know record instruments or like vocals and such uh some decent headphones would be like a good money spot and then you know, like some plugins that inspire you, like the Archeria V collection or something like that might be a good buy just to get all the fucking classic synth sounds ever in recorded fucking history, just to have that like on tap to make music with, if that's a value to you. Cause you know, even then like there's the new analog lab that's free. So I don't know. I, I think you could make a fucking hell of a record anymore for about 500 bucks. <laughs> Um, the future holds for study and usefulness of traditional music composition like counterpoint and four voice harmony I don't know that's an interesting question I mean I think there's a lot of value in that from you know the starting point of music right you know like if we're going to write if I'm going to write a piece of music and I have a come on you know I have a piano Where does that go? Okay, so I might need to learn about harmony to say like, well, you know, if I'm on the one and I'm resolving from four down to that, I could, you know, maybe borrow that E and jump to the, you know, E minor. And then, yeah, just like fucking voice it this way. And then I'm walking. And we have, you know, like a plagal cadence if we work. Whatever. I think there's a lot of value in that because music, like I said, is kind of a universal thing where even though I am not a fucking classically trained, you know, piano player or whatever, Knowing harmony and stuff is useful to me because when I apply that to my type of music, I might think like, well, I'm doing this. And I know that I could also work that C from like uh, B flat sus two. And then because I'm now I'm on the B flat, I could work down to like a fucking I don't know, E flat major. 
something like that. And I, you know, I could apply that to ambient music or cinematic composition or whatever. And I think understanding the fundamental aspects of how music works, you know, harmony and rhythm and melody and such, there's always going to be a place for that. But I think most music education could really benefit from learning to apply that to more contemporary things because I think that's where a lot of people get lost is you know if I was if I woke up and wanted to make this style of music today and I watched you know even like a Guy Michael Moore or Michel Michel Moore video on composition and stuff I I would feel like I was just in way over my head and it's like well I don't want to do that I want to sound like fucking Ben Frost or something then you know I jump on YouTube and I find uh you know, Mercurial Sounds, Alice, uh, I find fucking Mr. Bill, I find fucking Venus Theory, whatever, and then I'm learning directly how that style is made. That's great, but I think there's a bit of a fall-off because, you know, sometimes the people who run YouTube channels aren't the best communicators with why they're doing what they're doing, but when they do a great job at that like Oscar from uh the underdog music academy is like one of the best fucking YouTube music YouTube channels I've ever seen hands fucking down because he's great at communicating that but applying these concepts of like melody and harmony and rhythm and you know arrangement but in techno so I don't think it's ever going to go away but I think it could benefit from having more modernized versions of like how we discuss it because you know counterpoint is always going to be a thing in melody, but it's also sometimes just not as important. And it's not this like thing we have to emphasize. It's just a tool to have if you're writing, you know, poppy hooks. Like most pop songs anymore, like three chords just repeated for the entire song. So we might need to know just a good degree about harmony and not so much about like counterpoint and little turnarounds and phrasing and stuff. We just need to know how to evolve a melody based on three chords. And such, and you know that comes into arrangement and whatever. Um. Yeah, that was a bit of a rant. And uh, how are you liking the third wave? Is it worth the worth the price? I've only had it out of the box for like a couple days. It's fun. Um, you know, this is the first like real music I've sat down and made with it. Um, you know, very reminiscent, reminiscent of some of the stuff I can get on my Iridium. It just sounds a bit fatter and bigger, which I like. Uh, I really like the sort of virtual analog sounds this gets. I think it's mostly just because of the filter. Super fun. Um, need to explore it more though, so I don't, you know, don't know a whole lot about it other than just kind of fooling through presets mostly. <laughs> Uh, I think that's downloaded Motor Lab. Glad you liked it. Um, Cam Reese popping in to say, What up? Good to see you. Legit one of the only YouTubers I get excited to watch these days. Hey, thank you. Speaking of, I should finish my next couple videos. Um, my problem is consistency. I take so many musical influences from all genres that I find myself getting lost in actually what to focus on creating. I want to make timeless music, not quick buck. You know, I mean, just focus on one thing and give yourself a deadline. Like, let's say you've been really into, you know, techno, right? Okay, so make a techno EP. Do not do anything else until that is done. And give yourself four weeks, two weeks to do it. Every single day an hour or two a day if you can commit to that even 30 minutes a day whatever just like do this until it is done and if you don't use it save it all and you could chop out samples and loops and ideas and repurpose them or you know submit it to like a music library or something um you know i think the ultimate thing with consistency is that you're consistently creative i don't think it needs to be applied in any one direction unless like you want to be a really well-known dubstep artist right then you should probably stop making fucking lo-fi hip-hop and make more dubstep but you know if you want to be an artist then it's like that is the nature of being a musician is like here are the things i want to express in this body of work at this moment you know looking at 
you know, like the Black Keys, right? They started off very grungy blues garage rock stuff and then eventually transitioned into kind of like contemporary rock pop sort of thing, you know, gold on the ceiling and such, where it's very different vibe. Still Black Keys, but very different mood than their earlier stuff. And I think that's totally fine for an artist to explore different things. You know, I think the thing that makes it consistently you is always going to be your own sensibilities as an artist. Like, I like specific sonic palettes and textures and types of sounds, and I tend to integrate those into, like, everything I do. So even though, you know, what I've made here tonight is for a very specific sound and genre, I would like to think that you could tell that I made this. And again, it's it's not due to what I'm making, you know, 80s style synthwave stuff is not my thing whatsoever. Not that this is synthwave, but you know, like very distinctly 80s sounding music, not super my thing. But I think, you know, the way things are phrased, the rhythms, the like way things are put together still feels very Venus theory. So I don't think there's a problem with that is, yeah, just create shit. And try and direct it until, like, a catalog idea is completed. Even if it is just one song, that's fine. You know, artists evolve and change over time. That's just natural. Otherwise, you're making the same shit over and over. And that's going to be super boring <laughs> for you and for, you know, your audience. You know, if you're, if you're interested in so many different things, what I would challenge you to do is to make me interested in them. You know, you might be mostly known for electronic music but let's say you just love arranging strings and stuff make me interested in that because i came to you for electronic music why would i listen to that what are you going to do differently with that that's going to turn that into your version of that you know that's i think the best way to look at it um Yeah, uh, yeah. you can't learn from YouTube tutorials, for sure. I think that's the thing. Uh, there's another YouTuber, Tash, Tash Teaches, I think. Um, or it's Tashe Teaches, something like that. It's spelled funny. Again, I went to public school. Uh, just did a great video on in uh, forever student syndrome, and I think that's a big thing, is we could all sit here and, you know, chin stroke and theorize and watch fucking YouTube tutorials all goddamn day, but then you haven't made a goddamn piece of music in six months. So I think that's the thing is, yeah, like tutorials and such are only ever going to teach you so much. You can't do anything until you've applied that knowledge. Just because I get a, you know, doctorate in woodworking doesn't mean I know how to build a very stable, you know, set of stairs or something. <laughs> I might have a good idea as to how that might work, but I'm not ever going to build a set of stairs going... I'm, I think I could do that. I, I know the pieces that fit that. Um, do you have experience working in sound effects for movies and games? Uh, not distinctly sound effects like gunshots and such, but I've worked with a few trailer libraries to do um, sound effects for like trailer stuff, uh, you know, making like... Um, where's some stuff here? You know, big downers and pings and stuff like that where it's meant to be used for like trailer editing um and I, i've done some like ui design sound effects where it's like you know hey we're like a, a couple of the apps I've worked on, I've done that where like I get hired to make the music for the app, but then because they don't have the budget to hire like a bunch of people, they say like, hey, could you also just make the sound effects? So, you know, when someone clicks and it goes, someone has to make that noise. And I, I know how to do that. Um, not really, I guess what I consider myself specialized in, but like I am a sound designer. <laughs> so like I can figure it out. <laughs> And that's, I feel like that's most of my approach to everything, to like YouTube and music composition and like decent sampler and sound design and everything is just like, I don't know, but I'll figure it out. <laughs> um, 
Uh, industrial or EBM, you may like. Uh, industrial, I don't know, like not nine inch nails. Um, I don't know that I've ever gotten like super into industrial stuff. You know, I listened to like Ministry and whatever years ago and I, yeah, I don't know that I've ever gotten too deep into like the industrial world other than like, you know, listening to like industrial techno mixes and like witch house and things like that of like dark ambient and whatnot. Um, you know, God body disconnect, I guess is, I mean, that's like dark ambient. It's not really industrial. Yeah. Like industrial. I've just never gotten super duper into, I'm sure I've listened to a bunch of it as like reference music, but not something I have actively, you know, looked into distortion sample libraries. Uh, I have no idea. I mean, any sample library can be distorted if you just distort it. <laughs> uh, I, I would probably look at more plugins than I would sample libraries. You know, everything can be like a big, huge distorted hit with the right thing. Um, you know, I think uh, Keep Forest, the people that make Berserker, they have Devastator and stuff. Um, Krotos Audio has like some big distorted sample libraries. Boom, uh, the Boom libraries. I know there's a bunch of those. Um, Ava Music Group, AVA Music Group, uh, they've got a bunch of trailer instruments and stuff that are, you know, big fucking distorted, nasty things. And then, uh, you know, if you want something else, um, where's it at? If you have Phase Plant, you can get my ap Apocryph. Ap Apocryphia here. And this is big distorted shit. You know, that kind of... And that's free. Um, and then... Cube... Uh, has lots of good trailer heavy sounds, you know, cinematic, big distorted things. Um, rumble, really great preset. Bank, expansion pack, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, that kind of stuff. But even taking that and running that into like, you know, something really crazy like Rift. You know, now we've got a completely different vibe. Um, and then for Cube, I also made Dust. which is made with like my big synths and things. Uh, Oscar who? Um, Oscar from Underdog Music Academy on YouTube. Not sample libraries, but plugins. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, I mean, Archuria's uh, Cold Fire is great. Kilohertz Phase Distortion and uh, Distortion are great. PSP Saturator I really like for more, you know, it's like warm distortions. Rift is great for really crazy stuff. Uh, Cold Fire is great for crazy stuff. And I really like... Ow! I really like the Archuria uh, Tube Culture or Tube Vulture thing. Um, that's another good distortion. Other than that, you know, like your DAW has tons of distortions i'm sure and then the uh, melda productions free bundle has the melda saturator melda wave shaper and melda wave folder and all of those are you know insanely versatile those are all free you know and you could just get those and that's really all you need uh all right i think that's it because i am getting real hungry questions uh 
Uh, do you know any music labels that give an ear to artists that are not already known? I mean, any label will listen if you just submit, you know, if you hit their inbox on the right day. Uh, you just got to keep submitting. I, I would just ask if you really feel a label's necessary. I mean, do you, do you really want to give 30 to 50% of your money away? <laughs> just to say, like, I am on a label. That means I'm a real musician. Like, the, the defining thing of being a real musician is just you make fucking music. I, I don't see much reason to have a label at all anymore. Um, you know, if anything, strive to be like, fuck you, I don't need a label. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah, you can always submit, and they may or may not listen. I think a lot of the times it's just, you know, they're always so overwhelmed with submissions, and sometimes you just got to hit them on the right day at the right time with the right thing. Um, but... Yeah, I mean, you're just throwing shit at the wall, and I I would argue that in this day and age there are a lot better uses of your time than trying to get signed to a label. Unless a label is coming to you offering, like, fuck tons of money and all sorts of marketing and promotion. And even when they do, you know, typically that's signed on as a loan. Like, you pay that back. You don't just get a $100,000 advance. Like, it's a $100,000 loan. Um, if you look into, like, 360 deals, you know, that's, that's what you have to look forward to in the big time. Um, I know several artists around Nashville who have gotten into that, and it, it fucked them over very badly. Um, you know, using all the standard stuff, you know, DistroKid, SubmitHub, and, you know, just emailing different YouTube mix channels and Spotify playlist makers and, you know, whatever. I think that's a better way to get your music heard than sitting around waiting for a label, because then even if you do get signed, then the label's probably going to do those same things, and they're just going to keep 30% of your work for it. Um, yeah okay I think that's uh, uh, imagine a random weird joke in this spot to close it off a uh, random weird joke uh, mm. so uh, yeah so there's this family driving down the road uh, you know mom dad kid in the back uh, kind of heading out of the city and this garbage truck pulls in front of him. Dad, you know, swerves a bit, slams on the brakes. Fuck! And the mom hits him. Don't say that in front of the kid, God damn it! And the kid's back there, you know, on his iPad. Whatever, he doesn't hear. But mom's telling him, don't fucking say that in front of the kid. So they're going, they're going. They hit a bump. And the kid drops his iPad and starts looking up and whatever. Garbage truck hits a bump. Some garbage flies out, slaps on the windshield. So the dad wipes it off, you know, grumbles under his breath and whatnot. Keep going down this road, and what you know, there's another big-ass pothole. So, of course, garbage truck in front of him hits it. Dad backs off a little bit because he knows the truck's going to slow down or whatever. Garbage truck hits it. Sure enough, here comes more garbage. Dad wipes it off, grumbles under his breath. You know, kid's back there looking around. What's going on? Oh, nothing. Just garbage truck. Keep driving down this road, and Dad sees it. He knows it's coming. There's another goddamn pothole in this fucking road. Garbage truck hits it. Big, giant, purple, veiny dildo, about 18 inches, smacks onto the windshield. Dad immediately hits the wiper. Kid's already looking. Mom's trying to distract the kid from seeing it. Dad's wiping it. It's just big and flopping and stuck on there and finally gets it off, flings off. Dad looks over to Mom. Mom looks over to Dad. Mom looks back at the kid, and they're all looking at it. And, of course, you know, kids being kids, kid says, Mom, what was that? And Mom says, Oh... Uh, it's nothing, honey. It's just a, just a bug. And the kid says, well, it had a huge dick, didn't it? <laughs> uh, so that's it. Um, Snakes of Russia. Yeah, Snakes of Russia is fucking awesome. I love Snakes of Russia. Uh, yeah, all right, that's it. I'm gonna go eat. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, yeah, thanks to Groove Synthesis for letting me borrow the third wave here. This was fun to make some music with. Uh, Berserker from Keep Forest, the drums we use tonight. Uh, that's also out now. Uh, if you use the code Venus Theory, you'll get 10% off. I'll put that in like the description and the, you know, pinned comment and whatever. And uh, yeah, that's it. Um, go make music, everybody. Have a great weekend. I'm going to be making some more stuff and planning some projects. And uh, yeah, decent sampler instruments are out now. You know, decent sample store. I think there's still sales. Um, yeah, whatever. Go make shit. Get off the internet. Go do something. Bye.